Hey, it's Tuesday night and I'm going out to the Dallas Personal Robotics Group to check out the Robot Builders Night Out event. And uh, I'm hoping to find some interest in robot projects or other geeky stuff to shoot video of, so stay tuned. Good evening and welcome to the Dallas Personal Robotics Group Robot Builders Night Out, where we're using this Leica Black 360 camera to scan and record the physical space of this room. By hitting this button and just waiting a few seconds, it's going to take 10 photos around a circle for the entire room and it's also going to use a laser and measure everything in the room. So this is its initial scan to figure kind of out where it is and then it's going to do 10 sets of photos. So, so, my name's Carl. This is my latest diversion. So, uh, what we have going on tonight is uh, basically a processor to processor interface. Buried in here is Arduino Mega. And then up on top is a Raspberry Pi 3, something or other. And they, as of recently, are connected to each other with this uh, serial peripheral interface port, a spy port. And uh, the spy port's interesting, it's synchronous communication. Uh, but the way that it works is that you define one end as a master and the other as the slave. Um, so the Arduino, they have a spy support, they have a, a standard library, but it only works for the spy port as a master. Um, and I didn't want to do it that way. I wanted the higher level, more abstract brains to be in the Pi. So I want the Pi to be the master. But because there's no library already for the spy on the slave, as a slave on the Arduino, I got to write my own. So that's what I'm working on. So <coughs> what, what this is showing now is uh, I've gotten to the point where this um, sandbox code is running pretty well. And uh, I'll stop. This is an oscilloscope. So the oscilloscope is uh, I've got the green trace on uh, what's called a chip select signal on the spy port. And then the yellow trace is the interrupt service routine. So basically, I'll stop it and it's not jiggling around as much. Um, get a more normal looking one here. Okay, so uh, I've defined this protocol where there's 18 bytes in the burst. Uh, the first two get it started, and then there's 15 bytes of payload, and then there's one to kind of frame the end of it. And uh, uh, so you can see right now that at one millisecond per division, uh, whatever that is, one, two, three, well, it's a little over two milliseconds for a burst, and then uh, every, and then six milliseconds later, it does it again. So then, um, if you zoom in on this, what you can see is that the uh, what you can see is that 
uh, what's actually going on here is that here we can um, move the probe around this way. So what you're actually seeing here is that uh, the top one goes down. That's when the master says, hey, I have some data. And then the bottom one is what the actual data is. So there's uh, a single byte transfer during this time, which is about um, 15 or 20 microseconds. And you can see that it varies because the data varies. It's sending different bytes of data, different packets of data. So you see that very crazy and then, and then uh, once once that's done um, then the uh, then the mega uh, says okay I've just received uh, eight uh, a byte eight bits of data so I'll trigger an inner service routine and the way I wrote the code it sets this high so I can know how long it takes to run the interrupt service routine because this disrupted everything else going on uh, in the program so now I can I can see that the interrupt service routine is taking about uh, it's 20 microseconds per division so it takes about 10 microseconds to execute and that's what's going on here does that make sense yeah very cool thank you Talk the color wheel to like it says, you have three or four of these, like, okay, well, Doug's is green, somebody else's is red, somebody else's is blue. And then there's a speed toggle, so I'll adjust the speed down. The aiming is to put the rear facing at you. And so now I'm set to drive. <laughs> problem with the UI design is it's designed for the ball mount, for the, the Sphero ball. So you only have one actuator, but you have tank style driving. So you push forward to go forward, you push left to turn left. But if you go up against something, you can't reverse. You have to actually toggle it to go in reverse. And it's really hard for the roboticist. To, to do that because we're used to having reverse. But we can also put it up on high speed. That's pretty fast. robot project it is a combination of Lego bricks and uh, microcontrollers and computers and cameras. Essentially what I have is a um, robot that can move in any direction. So it has these mechanism wheels on it. So they can move side to side, spin in place, and go forward and back. So I have three directions I can move. Um, this is built for our um, can-can soccer competition. So basically the robot has to go out all by itself using just the camera and find a can and then pick it up with the ripper. To do that I have a vision software on the computer which basically tells me where the object is based on its color and its shape. Uses the camera to kind of locate that. Um, when it gets near to the object there are IR sensors on the bottom left and right and middle that center up the robot to grab it. And then when the robot gets close to it, it can grab it here. This bar here is actually just used for confirmation for the program. So when this, when this can's in the ripper, the bar gets pushed back and knows it has the, the can in there. And then from there, basically, we'll now get back to the goal and drop off the can. I, 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 I didn't really 
One more try. Oh, where it goes fine yeah. until yeah. I, I, I tell it to write 200 points. Cool. And report the time. 